Hello everyone and welcome. My name is Trevor. I'm an onboarding engineer here at SkySiv. And in this video, we'll be going over the new tapered member functionality in Structure 3D uh, that pairs with the section builder module. So the accompanying documentation article will be linked in the description. So make sure to check that out as well. Um, first, what we're gonna talk about is what a tapered member is and analytically how it's modeled. And then we'll talk about how to actually generate one in the SkySiv platform. So in SkySiv Structural 3D, there are members, as you see here, which are basically just a 2D shape extruded between two nodes or two points, and these are considered prismatic members. A tapered member is considered non-prismatic because it doesn't uh, adhere to the same section throughout the length of the member. In our case, it would vary uh, in the width or in the depth uh, linearly as the member goes from point one to point two. So if we take a look at tapered members, we can see that on the left here, we have an example of a tapered member in, in Structural 3D. And then here is kind of how that's modeled. So because of how Structural 3D operates in the back end, tapered members aren't modeled specifically like as they look here, um, but are very closely approximated using a series of shorter prismatic members put together like you see on the right here with gradual increases in moment of inertia and dimension. And it's kind of similar to how an integral works in mathematics. What you, the user, sees is a depiction of the tapered member here. But in the back end, this is how we're running the calculation. This is how the section is being analyzed um, with these shorter members is like, like this. So now that we have a general idea of what a tapered member is and how it's calculated in the SkySiv platform, let's show how to generate one. So first, I'm going to point out that the release date of this video, there are four section types that allow for tapering, including I-beams, uh, rectangular sections, hollow rectangular sections, and T-beams. So if we go into sections here, we go to the builder or the integrated section builder. Um, just like if we're adding a, a section to any of our members here, we can open up the section templates button. And as I mentioned, the rectangular, hollow rectangular, I shape and T, T shape or T beam sections are the ones that are, are valid. Another thing to note is that the tapered members function requires you to be in the integrated version of the section builder within Structure 3D because there is that third dimension component. So if you were to go to the section builder on its own in the dashboard, uh, you wouldn't be able to create a tapered section because again, you need that third dimension to uh, you know, give it that taper. So for example, let's, let's start with an eye shape here. We'll bring that in. And if we go over to the side, we see there's an extra uh, tab here called taper. We'll click on non-prismatic and now it's giving us the options uh, for our tapering. The first field is gonna be the type. So whether that's a taper or a haunch, we're gonna go over just tapered members in this video. And then in a future video, we'll be going over how to create a haunch as well. So the next field tells us how we want to approximate our tapered member section properties using normal prismatic members. So if we hover over the tooltip of the prismatic member sizes, we can see where my reference to the integrals uh, comment comes into play. We can see that the step bars indicate the short segments of the prismatic members that are joined together that we use for analysis. And this setting tells us what point to use for the max height of the tapered section at each prismatic section. So basically what you need to know is that the maximum option, the most material is used and it is the least conservative. And then on the minimum side, it's the least material is used for the analysis and it's the most conservative um, in terms of analysis. So most conservative, least aggressive or least conservative, most aggressive. And then we have an average in between. And just remember that the bars are what's actually being approximated for analysis. So that's the actual material that's being used in the analysis. So moving down, we have the number of prismatic segments here. This indicates how many joined prismatic sections we want to use for our tapered member. And the more segments you indicate here, the closer it gets to you know, true accuracy, but the longer the solve time will be. So we usually recommend using four segments. That's going to usually give you a pretty accurate uh, representation. But if you really want to be um, you know, the maximum accuracy you can, we allow up to send, uh, 10 prismatic segments joined together. But again, Anywhere between four and 10 is good. We, re we usually recommend four. So now moving on, we actually get to our tapered section uh, depth and width fields here. The grayed out value is gonna be the baseline depth and width, um, and then should match the, the values that are shown in the actual uh, section properties here. So we can see that for this I section, it's eight inches wide and eight inches tall. So that's what, we're, that's what fields we're, we're seeing here. And for example, if we want to taper the depth of our member from eight inches down to six inches, we can type in six, and this is gonna be at the bottom. You can click off and we can see that this red rectangular appears. 
this is going to indicate us the change in section. So um, for the depth change here, we can see that it goes from the bottom eight inches to the six inches mark. And you can see that these, these one inch ticks here. So that's where the end of the section appears. We can also toggle um, in terms of the depth. We can toggle if we wanted to taper on the bottom, taper on the top, or taper uh, equally, top and bottom. And just for an example as well, for the width variation, if we wanted to taper down our width from eight inches to six as well, we can type in six, change our field, or just refresh. And now we can see that it's taking away one inch of the flanges on each side. So the green is the width adjustment and the red box is the depth adjustment. If at first this image is, is confusing, you can always view the start and end sections by clicking on the view summary button here. This is going to load up our start section, which is our 8x8 I-beam, and it's going to tell us what our finish section is. So you can see that it's uh, chopped off the 2 inches from the bottom, and we can see that the, the flanges uh, on each side have shrunk from 8 to 6 inches. We can see that the thickness of the flanges have stayed the same, as well as the thicknesses of the web as well. So we'll back out of that. And if we're done adjusting the taper for our section, we're going to go ahead and hit submit. And at the time of the release of this uh, 1.0, tapered sections are not going to be able to be shown in the 3D renderer, um, but they will be able to be shown in the actual visibility settings. So if we go to the visibility settings, turn on 3D members, we can see that here, I'll make this a little shorter so we can see the scale a little more. So there we go. We've it's a five feet long member, five foot long member. We can see pretty easily that the taper is running from here to here, and if we kind of line up the sections here, we can see that taper is 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 happening in 3D here for our member. It's pretty self-explanatory, but obviously the start section, the larger part of your section, tapers down to a smaller part of your section, and that the start of the taper occurs at the start node of the member itself. So if we click on the member. Our node A is our start member and our node B is our end member. And that's where that taper direction goes. And that's gonna wrap up this informative video on the brand new tapered member functionality here in SkySiv Structure 3D and the integrated SkySiv Section Builder. Look for the additional video explaining haunches if that is something you're interested in as well. And if you enjoy the video, please give it a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure to follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook for more interesting content. And thanks again for watching. We hope to see you guys on the SkySiv platform soon.